Welcome to Art with Diane Mahaffey. Today I'm going to teach you a new hand building technique. There are four most popular clay hand building techniques and they are coiling, pinch and pull, the dowel technique, and slabbing. And so today I'm going to teach you a really easy and cute project in slabbing. And slabbing is something that if you learn to do it well, you can just do years and years of slabbing different ways and just have a great time and do lots of functional things. So get ready and we will get our materials. Okay, I want to show you what gave me inspiration for this project. My studio cat, Smarty Picanzo, and she hangs around in my studio all the time. I wanted her to be here today, but she's out chasing squirrels, and she decided that she did not want to come in here and be videotaped. But this is what I created by just being inspired by my cat. Now, these are little fat kitty helper dishes. And by helper, that means they could be functional in that they could uh, hold paper clips, change, rings, uh, even a cupcake for kids. And you can see uh, when she lays on her back with her legs sprawled out and um, that just gave me the idea to do these little trinket fat kitty dishes. And they're done with a brownish clay. Uh, you can see I used two different brown clays, but it doesn't matter. You can use white clay. Here's one that has a moss green glaze on it and an apricot colored glaze. So there's so much fun to do. So easy, and you don't have to do a cat. You could do a dog, pig, but all of them i made so far, except for one, has been the cat. Now, this is what I did. I got some paper, and I drew a cat, and after I did this one, I thought I tried it with my clay, and it was just about right, but I wanted it a little bit fatter right in here. So I redrew it. And then I like tried it, and I like that one so much that I put it on foam paper so it will not tear up and be waterproof. And I went ahead and drew my little um, details on there, and I even wrote the steps on the back so that I can remember because I do so many different projects. Um, and you can change them out. You could have a pig. So this morning, for the first time, I made a pig one. Now this is still wet clay. That all I did was changed the ears by flopping down the nose and I made the tail differently by swirling around. Oh, and hooves instead of the little kitty beanie pads on the bottom. So um, you can do koala bears or whatever, but I would say start off by doing a um, cat because that's what I'm going to teach. All right, for your materials, you will need clay. So I've got a big bag of clay right here. You will need spacers. Now these are paint stirring sticks and I put two together and tape them so that will give me the thickness that I need with my clay. You'll need a rolling pin. You'll need a porous table surface. Uh, if your table's slick and smooth, that will not work because the clay's going to uh, stick. So get either paper or newspaper or put a canvas over the table. It's got to be porous so it will not stick. Even a big piece of cardboard would be fine. All right, you will need a needle tool. You'll need a pattern of some sort. So that's my pattern, my original pattern. You will need slip which is actually clay water and an old paintbrush that helps acts like a glue. And you'll need disposable bowls, these, because that's what you will slump your uh, clay into it and it will give it that form. So there's hump situations and slump situations that you do use when you're doing slab. And last of all, 
you will need a can opener, a pointy triangular can opener. You would be surprised how valuable that is, and I'll show you how to use it right now. All right, so I'm gonna cut a piece of clay, and I'm gonna put it right over here. I've got a wire tool, and you could cut it off with even a wire coat hanger if you don't have a wire tool. So I have my slab of clay. It's about a half an inch to an inch thick and put my spacers on each side. So what I'm doing right now is making a slab. A slab means flat piece of clay. That's S-L-A-B, slab. And I get my needle tool and I'm just gonna go right down in here. And if you don't have a needle tool, you can use something like a pointy wooden stick a skewer or something. So lots of household items work. All right, I'm going around here, go straight down. And go around here to start off with. And close it up, make them meet. All right, now take this off like this and put it away except for a little piece that you'll need for the eyes and little uh, paw pads and cover it back up so that it will not dry out. Take care of your clay because it's no fun working with hard, dry clay. All right. So now it looks pretty much like a cat that's been run over in the highway, but we're gonna make it come to life. So I'm going into the corners and getting rid of that cut out look. See how I'm pressing it in just a little bit, rounding it out on the corner. And I'll show you what to do about the tail in a minute. It's real easy. All right, see how much better this side looks than over here? You would never want to leave it right there, like that. Round it out. All right, it's pretty rounded on that side. All right, smooth out the, I'm gonna smooth out the texture of the canvas because I want it to be real glassy, shiny, when the glaze gets on there and it'll look better for this situation without the canvas texture. All right, so flip it over and round out this side. Okay, round them out. That takes a little bit of additional time, but it's certainly worth it because you want your craftsmanship to be nicely taken care of and tidy. All right, now I'm gonna smooth that side out too, even though it's gonna be probably the bottom. There'll be one side you'll probably like a little better than the other side. So that one's got a little smudge of white clay in it. So I might let it have no problems, but I'll just let that be the back. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do the tail. All right, for the tail, if you'll see this pattern, I've got it drawn like that, so I'm going to do like this. And take out this negative shape right there. All right, now round that out again. And then make this go pointy. And then scratch this because remember in the other uh, YouTubes I've done, you scratch and slip or score and slip every part that you want to join together. Now, it will not come apart. Okay, so the tail's taken care of. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to do the eyes. All right, so I'm gonna make two little, and I've, I'll put one right here for you to look at. Maybe you can see this one better as we do these. Take a good look at that. And it's football shapes. So I've got one, and you want to get them pretty close. So don't put them on until you're sure. I need a little bit more clay on that one. All right, to make a football shape, make a sphere, then roll it over here, turn it, roll it over there, and you've got a little football shape. All right, let's see if they're kind of identical. No, I need a little bit more on this one. All right, now they're good. All right, so I'm gonna put them right here, but I've got to scratch or score where I want them to be. That'll go there. That one will go there. All right, a little dot of water. Slip water. And the way you make slip water is you just get mostly water in a container and just pinch off a little bit of clay to go in and stir it up. It will not dissolve immediately, but it'll put some of that clay, the clay minerals in the water. All right, so after you do that, get your needle tool and make the pupils. All right, so next thing I wanna do is make the little nose. Now it's triangular. So, probably need a little bit more than that. All right, tap it on the table, make it triangular. All right, so I'm gonna score it right here. Put a dab of water. You don't need to put it on both sides. Okay, there you go, there's that one. All right, now for the little um, on my cat, she's got cute little fat cheeks on each side, so I wanted to capture that. See how her nose is a triangle? So I already have that, but I'm going to make those cute little fat cheeks. Alright, make this real smooth. Okay, I'm going to scratch it. They're about equal. And put it here and here. All right, need a little bit of moisture. Just a little bit, don't ever do it. And then I'm gonna push it down. And so, till it touches the nose very slightly. All right, after I do that, make some uh, pores that the hair whiskers come out of. And I can use the needle tool just to bring this out and this. That bring out the whiskers. Notice I'm dragging it instead of going like this because that makes clay crumbs drag it. Okay, after I do that, um, look at the ears. All right, so that's when this really is wonderful. Put that right there and rock it back and forth. How easy is that? And you don't even have to go to the clay tool store to get one of those. All right, next are the little pads. I'm going to just put a little X mark for a scratch. area where I'm scoring it. And I think these are really cute. They should really show up really well in this one with this glaze. This glaze allows the clay color to show through. So I'll put that one there so you can see it. All right, so I'm gonna make a lot of these and I'm just gonna drop them till I get a lot of them on here.
it notice it's not sticking because it hasn't been had pressure applied and it hasn't been scored and slipped so I'm not worried about it touching the clay almost there okay I'll make more all right so I'm gonna get the slip and I'm just gonna tap 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 on each score place that will make sure these stick and they do not um, come off all right scratch and put it on scratch each one of them scratches to scratches they'll show up especially after they get glazed now notice when I made the little pig trinket dish I didn't make these I made little hooves so think about what animal you want to make a clay trinket dish of okay I'm gonna need to make one more in fact I'll make two more that one's a little bit too little there's one Almost done, and then you're gonna love the way we make them take their shape. All right, so let me rub that smooth right here. Now look at that. All right, so after you do that, I very gently pick it up, turn it over, put your name on the back, writing my name, Diane Mahaffey. because uh, you won't take it off of this dish right here, bowl, until after it's dry. And you don't want to put your name on it then, because it'll be too dry. So your name's on the back, you get this dish, because you've got to make it keep its shape. And you just very gently push it down in there. Um, I kind of like to curve my little paws in just a little bit in the tail. All right, push it down a little bit more. And then make sure it touches the bottom down here because that will make it sit a little bit flat so it won't be so roly-poly all over the table. And then you leave it for about 24 hours and you'll come back and you'll take them off and fire them in the kiln. Here's the pig, here's the cat, and you'll be ready to glaze it and use it. Hope you enjoyed this, and if you like this um, YouTube, subscribe or send me a message and let me know what you would like to see next in the way of working with clay. Thank you, Diane Mahaffey signing off.